can make a difference. Oh, it does. Crikey. A bit bright. Illuminate my chin. Hello, gorgeous. I'm the Fairy Voice Mother, and today I'm going to be reacting to Help by John Farnham live with the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra. I have a sneaking suspicion that this is a cover of the Beatles version because below the video where it says songwriters, it says John Lennon and Paul McCartney, so could be a clue. <laughs> I absolutely love that song. I love the Beatles so, so, so much. And um, I really am in the mood to hear that song right now. I have to pay my taxes this week. This request was made on Discord by one of my lovely patrons, so I'm very excited to see what all the fuss is about. I haven't really analysed that many Australians yet. I think Matt Corby's Australian, but other than that, we of course had the pleasure of having the presence of wonderful, luminous, magical Australian actually on the channel. Including that, I think this is the third time we've gone down under. Let's get cracking, shall we? Don't forget to stick around to the end for our oracle card. Ah, this is the front of the oracle card today. Right up my street. Love a bit of joy. Let's go, John. Here's an oldie but a goodie. That is true. Oldie but a goodie. What are they chanting? like Freddy. Farney? Oh, it's tense! Oh, it really is tense. When I was younger, so much younger than today. <laughs> nice. I'm John! It was just like being given the most perfect cupcake with a little bit of distortion. And I just gave it like a little melem and someone took it away. <laughs> when I was younger, that little bit of distortion is so light and so free. And that open quality we hear in that texture is a result of just a little extra push of breath and slacking off the tension ever so slightly in the vocal folds. If the tension remains the same, that extra push translates as volume. And so you might be thinking, well, how does that work? Because surely if you release a little bit of the tension in the folds, it's just gonna sound breathy, right? So this is where the control element of it comes in. And this is the thing that takes a little bit of time to practice and develop. If you wanna introduce this kind of quality into your own singing, you need to practice the creak sound. So the creak is like a vocal fry, uh, but it's just a little bit more intense. Uh, this can actually be the foundation for quite a few extreme vocal techniques, including fry screaming. Uh, 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 uh. It's a little baby mini squeeze, not a damaging extrinsic uh, squeeze, which is why it's safe. Uh, there's three main results when you start implementing this kind of technique. You either get it straight away, which happens, you go a little bit too hard and you get when I was younger. If you're into that, that's fine. Or the third thing is you will be tempted to squeeze when I so my advice with this is just to be, try that creak sound and then see if you can start to implement it gradually into your notes. It's the product of patience, that little technique. I love the placement. He's got such a lovely long neck, like a beautiful curve. He's very necky. Was younger. And that kind of little jolt of the neck can sometimes really encourage the jolting down of the larynx as well. That kind of synonymous movement. So much. That position that he's got his head in and his neck in is why there's such a specific resonant frequency there. It's the difference between so and so. Just by tilting the head up and down, we get completely different tones. That tilted larynx position when we do it here sounds very dramatic and sad. Oh. 
when we move it here, we get a little bit more of a higher quality to it, which makes it sound cooler and rockier, I guess, in my opinion. Sound opera is cool too. I hope he's gonna sing again, otherwise the rest of it I'm gonna have to just analyze as fans. Which would be interesting, actually. I always find it crazy how you have a massive audience of tens and tens of thousands of people. They're bound to not all be singers, right? But they always manage to sing in tune when they're all together. I would love to know the science behind that. That's for another research topic. Oh, come on. <laughs> Maybe he's a bit knackered. Oh, yeah. <laughs> modulation of the melody. So if we were singing the original melody in this key, the chord would be Help me if you can, I'm feeling down. But he is doing... Yeah. Help me if you can, I'm feeling down. Whatever. The chord there was a minor chord in the original, but he's changed it to a major chord and it makes it sound really epic and stoic and... Whereas how the other melody worked in that different chord made it sound much more nervous and tense. And that is the power of music theory. It's an amazing example of how you can really just see a song as simply melody, lyrics and harmony. You always have permission to shuffle those things around and you can really revolutionise any song. So what he's done there, I imagine this was probably like late 70s or early 80s or something, he's managed to extract the essence of the original song and modernise, at the time it would be modernising it. It's not only the obvious things that make it incredibly typical of this period of time, like the really wet drum beat. <laughs> And obviously the hair, like the power rock style vocals. It's fascinating and it proves really that you can make any song any way. There's a lot of creativity and skill. And the notes that he goes to in these phrases are just so gorgeous and they suit him so well. And they all contain this really interesting rattle. Ah. Yeah, it's that. I think, I think it's the uvula. <laughs> I don't know how he does that on an eval. Mine! Uh. No, I think what he's doing is flapping around the uvula, which is the dangly thing at the back of your throat. I don't have much autonomy over my own uvula. his soft palate which is right at the back of the mouth and he knew that that was going to give him that kind of more open cathedral-like resonance as opposed to where he was resonating the feel which was much more forward. Now you wouldn't do that unless you knew the relationship between the inner workings of like the mouth and throat and resonance. It's more than even the awareness as well. You would need to do a lot of drills to be able to adjust the breath pressure. The breath 
pressure between those two different qualities. If you want to work on this yourself, funnily enough, that creak sound will help with this as well. This is in that kind of mixed voice realm, which we hear a lot about. If you try that creak sound and then try and go into a high note, if you're breathier than you want to be up there, so insecure, then that just means your vocal folds are too open. So if you encourage them to creak together and get that closure, they're going to have that tension that's required for them to close properly and do nice resonating thick lusciousness. She loves it. again. When I was young. How did Celine Dion manage to sneak into this video and the last video? When I was young. It's a conspiracy. Obviously that's not actually Celine Dion's song. It's um, what's his name? Oh, what's that geezer's name? It's um, can see his face. Eric Carmen. Yeah, let's listen to that again. That was amazing. I'm getting chills just thinking about it. When I was young, Ooh. so much younger oh. than oh. today. I never needed anybody's help in any way. <laughs> That's amazing. But now those days are gone. I'm not so self assured. Now if I have changed my mind, I've opened up the door. I'm not so self assured. You can tell how he's leaned in to each of those notes as they climb up. I'm not so self assured. Rather than imagining it as more of like a legato phrase, like a big kind of, I'm not. It's very tempting to tense up as the notes climb up, especially when they all have to stay strong. We really want to squeeze it up, but he knows we cannot. You can kind of envisage the notes just dropping in instead of moving up, which is a much better way to think about it. Now fun. I love this shape. Gives the belt like a much harsher cutting quality, which is really nice, especially when you juxtapose it next to a big round open one, how he did there. I've opened up the door. I've opened up the door. Uh. Next to ah, it's such a beautiful contrast. Ah. <sighs> Details. If you want to make a section of your song extremely iconic, like for example, really, really sparse instrumentation, it's just you and a mic and a tune and a message, then you've got to do something special. Because if you sing everything in the same position with the same characters in the resonance, it will sound good, but it's not going to be anywhere near interesting enough to be alone in an arrangement. Plain vocal performances are sometimes the perfect thing if you have a lot going on, but if there's a section where it's not, then that's where playing around with placements is the secret to something memorable. Now I find I've changed my mind. I've opened up the door. Help me if 
Wow! Now we're at the end of this performance, I'm more inclined to say this kind of rattle that he's doing is something that is potentially borderline involuntary. And the reason I think this is because all of his high belty notes have this rattle in it. Usually people that want to add extreme vocal techniques on deliberately, they decide that they want to do it to represent like a specific peak in a song. Or, in the case of like metal performances, a lot of the time it will just be distortion all the time because that's the genre. But this genre is the one where you would expect more of a sporadic distortion and especially that rattle quality. I just can't imagine him being like, oh yeah, I'm gonna make sure I wiggle my uvula here, here and here. It might of course not be as uvular, it could be something else rattling away in there. <sighs> but yeah, a totally euphoric five and a half minutes. I loved the uh, orchestral elements, I loved the choir. Unless you were really listening out for the choir, you would kind of not really notice it because it was so well arranged to let the lead vocal soar over the top. And then of course it was used for effect in that little stabby moment and it, it, they got much louder. <laughs> It's the sort of thing that if you heard it over and over again, you'd pick out more and more. It's one of those. But what's cool about it is that at no time was it kind of genre ambiguous. It was very much still within this classic rock realm because the main thing you could hear was like the drums and the vocals. The other stuff just kind of seasoned it. So great to hear such a different, exciting arrangement of a song that I love so much as well. I'll have to analyse another song of his at some point to pick up on more of his vocal goodness, if there are any suggestions. You know where to put them. Not in my lap, comments. Anyway, we can't do the closing speech yet because I have to read you out today's oracle card. So are you sitting comfortably? When did you forget to be joyful? Or could it be that is your superpower? Feeling joy requires a certain level of innocence. Can you put all that adult crap to bed and bounce like a big kid? <laughs> show me your innocent joy and I will show you a world that's light-hearted. That was a lovely one. You can't argue with that. You really can't. It's a sneak preview of next week. There you have it. Thank you so, so, so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. If there are any singers you would like to see me react to, please do let me know down below in the comments, not on my crotch, and it would be my pleasure. I hope you have a wonderful day. I love you so, 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 so much, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.